with locally approved, financed, and serviced home loans, Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Does your car have some body damage? Stop by Lakeside Auto Body where we can take care of all your auto body needs. Whether it is dent removal or hail damage, they can fix it. They also have a wide variety of paints to choose from for partial or full body paints. You can find us at Hedinger 103 Highway 8 South, North Dakota 58639 or call us at 701-567-4380. Discover the Adams County Library, where adventure meets relaxation. Beyond books and movies, we offer the incredible Recreation Library, which is absolutely free to the public. Explore serene waters with kayaks and paddle boards. Enjoy quality family time with disc golf, bikes, and kites. Experience thrilling activities like tennis, pickleball, and spike ball. Unlock a world of not only recreation, but excitement here at the Adams County Library. Attention, coaches, players, and fans. Here is a message from Nighthawk Nation. We as Nighthawks expect you to follow these simple expectations. Make sure to practice good sportsmanship. Please be respectful to all. Positive cheering goes a long way. And remember, we are just kids. We all make mistakes. To our coaches, remember to always encourage your players. We all make mistakes, so for the players to stay focused on the game, as coaches, you should always talk positively to your players. And remember, to relax, let the players play, and the refs ref. To all players, leave a positive imprint on and off the field, court, mat, and track. Work hard, play a role, and most importantly, have fun. It's just a game. Fans, we need to see you at our sporting events because without you, there is no excitement. To make sure you stay at our games, please refrain from using bad language, no yelling at refs, coaches, and players. Maybe you're yelling positive because you can't cheer if you're not here. So remember... As a West River doctor, we provide care for patients of all ages, from newborns and toddlers to tweens and teens. Whether your children need routine checkups or specialized care, our experience and compassion are here to support their growth. Because even though they may be small, their health is of utmost importance. I'm a West River physician dedicated to the health of your family and our rural communities. Hawk Talk is the official podcast of Henninger Public School, where we keep you in the loop with the latest school news, offer inside of school board meetings, and dive deep into the educational experience our school provides for the students, parents, and tight-knit community. Take a minute to enjoy a clip from our most recent episode. All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hawk Talk. Today I have with me Sheriff Jordan Fisher. Jordan's been here for the last two years, been a heavy involvement with um, obviously law enforcement, but especially our school and our community, um, having a heavy hand on taking care of drugs in our local uh, local area. And I just want to thank Jordan for coming in and talking to us today about the services that you provide, not only in our community, but also how that affects our kids here at the school. So thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, no, thank you for having me, Joel. I think this is a great platform uh, for us to be able to kind of have a different dynamic. You know, we try to get into the paper as much as we can and do some mm -hmm. articles there and go on KNDC, but this is just another form of media that I think is just fantastic for this community to have. So thank you for having me on. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. So uh, the first question that I just kind of want to get out of the gate is obviously just kind of the history, you know, where you came from and, and how we got to here to this current moment. But before we get here, though, you just got back from kind of some unplanned time off. Yeah. So what happened? What did did uh, some medical stuff or are you doing all right? Yeah. So uh, it was December 19th. So just before Christmas, I ended up having to go into the hospital, have my appendix removed. And oh, fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's you know? so fun. Yeah. yeah, being uh being a little stubborn, I was like, man, I think I just got a little sick. You know, I have you know three kids, and I was like, man, maybe I just have like a little bit of a stomach bug. And yeah. uh, no, it ended up being uh been being appendicitis. So went oh, in fun. and had to get that removed, and um, doing really good now. The awesome. hospital staff, the nurses, and uh, give a shout out to Dr. Andreas up there, the surgeon. She 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 did an awesome job. So I'm feeling really good now. I'm back mm-hmm. out on on patrol and on duty, and sitting at home for six weeks kind of started yeah it nuts. was kind of a recovery process <laughs> too you yeah. couldn't just jump back into it because there's i'm sure weight restrictions and the whole yeah. slew of things that you can and also cannot do yeah so yeah it was it was tough man that that six weeks just being you can only watch so much netflix right <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah you can only keep your mind so busy you want to go it. and do things yeah. so well yeah. glad to have you back glad to see you yeah. back in uniform and stuff so so great to have you here so let's go into the history so how did we get to sheriff at hedinger where did that all start? Where are you from? How did you go, you know, into this field? All of that. Sure. So originally I'm from uh, Bowman and uh, mm-hmm. lived there all the way up until I was a junior in high school. Uh, moved down to Rapid City and lived with my dad the last two years of high school Okay. down there. And uh, while I was in Rapid City, the school systems down there have what's called an SRO or a school resource officer. Okay. Um, they're an actual licensed peace officer. They okay. work for the you know Rapid City Police Department, um, but they end up coming to the school and they're there throughout the day, Monday through Friday during normal school hours. Mm-hmm. And their job really is to you know make sure that kids are safe first yeah. and foremost. Um, but they also kind of act like a counselor in a way. And so oh, okay. with with me uh, going to school down there. I've always been interested in law enforcement. That was also that was always a career path that was always interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in sixth grade, I still talked to my sixth grade teacher from Bowman, and uh, we had to write this little project about where we saw ourselves when we were grown ups, right? And mm-hmm. on there, I put down that I was going to play football for NDSU, <laughs> and nice. that I was going to go and I was going to be an under, undercover DEA agent. Well, oh, I wow. didn't play football for NDSU, and I didn't go into the <laughs> DEA, but you know, but the trajectory is same, it's similar. Correct. Similar. Yeah. yeah. So sixth grade, I'd say, is kind of when I started having um you know an interest in law enforcement yep. and i think a lot of that has to come down to will smith and movie bad boys you know because i was like man i gotta drive like a ferrari and like you know i gotta wear like a you know like miami vice stuff right yeah yeah <laughs> every sixth grade boy's dream man is to drive a ferrari around and go oh my gosh. And, you know. yeah be the coolest guy in the block <laughs> That's of course it. Yeah. and so um you know, did that and then went down to Rapid, got to really um, become pretty close to my SRO. He was a really cool okay. guy. Um, well, I'd go into his office during study hall period, mm-hmm. and we would just talk about law enforcement. Wow. And okay. our girls wrestling team, all the achievements they did. First of all, on behalf of all the parents and everybody to you athletes, we're so incredibly proud of you. Uh, what a great seasons for all of you. And with that being said, I just, like I say, I want to welcome you guys all here. And I'm going to turn it over to Blake Olson for the invocation. Blake Larson, holy cow. Okay, please assume my attitude of prayer. Uh, Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this day that we're able to spend time together to celebrate uh, Nighthawk Athletics. Uh, Thank you for all the blessings that you give us every day and that we're able to uh, play as a team and uh, build relationships with one another. Uh, bless this food to our bodies that we're able to live for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now we'll be setting up for uh, to eat. We're going to start with the head table. Then we'll start with the girls over here. Then go to the boys. And then just keep going down the line like that. So we'll start with the girls over or the head table. Then the girls can go. Then the boys over here can go. suggested that one of his really good friends was a deputy sheriff uh, for the Pennington County Sheriff's Office. He's like, hey, if your dad will sign off on a permission slip for you, you can start going on ride-alongs on weekends. They have what's called an explorer program down there. Okay. And so um, if you're in high school, you can actually start you know, going on ride-alongs with officers. You can hang out at the department and really see what law enforcement has to offer as wow. far as a career. And as soon as I did that, the first ride-along that, that I went on, mm-hmm. um, he ended up chasing a guy down and arrested him. And I was like, 
that's for me, man. That you was know? it. It that was that it. moment, yeah. and you were like, "I'm in." Yeah, I mean, and the guy like, was uh, the guy had a bunch of bunch of meth on him, and wow. he took off on a traffic stop, and he got out of the traffic stop. He took off on foot. I saw the deputy chase him down and arrest him, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, pulled a whole bunch of meth off of him. And he's like, "This is why we do what we do to keep this community safe." And from there, I was like, "This is for me." You so, know? so you mean you really you. Now, if you enjoyed that conversation and would like to hear the rest of it, you can go and search for Hawk Talk HPS on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and of course, our YouTube channel. Now on to the rest of our broadcast. The HPS Stream Team is a school-to-work program in which students in grades 7 through 12 gain real-world experience while learning about the basics of live broadcasting and providing a service to our community. Now, let us take a moment to meet one of our members who help us make this possible. Hey everybody, thank you very much for tuning in to the Streamer Spotlight, a portion where we highlight our streamers that are behind the cameras, behind the mics, behind the laptops, making these broadcasts a reality. Today we have Robert Larson in with us today. Robert, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Robert has been um, actually has actually done one of these before, but it's been quite a while. So we thought we would kind of refresh it up and kind of give a new version of it. But Robert, thank you very much for coming in. Um, for those who haven't seen one of these before, why don't you introduce yourself? You know how how old are how old are you? Your hobbies, your interests, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Uh, I'm Robert Larson. I am 17 years old. I am a junior currently. Uh, and some of my hobbies are like, for example, I really enjoy just gaming. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, watch quite a bit of like shows and movies and especially anime. Um, and I really enjoy video editing, which most people don't. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I find it really therapeutic for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, like I'm a really big like music guy and I have a whole list of hobbies, just things that I enjoy. Awesome. Fantastic. So a lot in that media realm mm -hmm. that you're really, really interested in. And you've been on the stream like, team for two years yeah, now. Two you're years. Coming up on the third year this mm -hmm. fall. So, I mean, you've been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, what do you like about the stream team? What's some of your, your favorite things? Probably my biggest thing is just like, it definitely feels like a, a, a community. Yes, very, very much so. Where you kind of have a group of your peers that are kind of either like-minded mm -hmm. or similar interests. Yeah, right? definitely. Gotcha. Because like, you know, we have a we have a stream team chat on teams and we have a serious one, but also more of a funnies one. Mm -hmm. And there is a whole culture there. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. It kind of allows the students to kind of um build that bond, kind of that trust mm -hmm. amongst each other. Be themselves. Absolutely. So um not only with that too, um other things with the stream team that Robert's been doing, because one of the things we like to do with the uh, streamer spotlight is kind of not only introduce you to who they are, but also kind of show what they've done for the program as well. And Robert's one of our stream team leaders. Mm -hmm. He has a diamond category in all three, um, or he has a diamond badge for all three categories, which is microphone, uh, which is your commentator, commentating. Producer, um, producer and, and cameraman. And cameraman. He has diamond level, which is our highest level of competency that you can reach. And by doing that, it made him a stream team leader. So Robert has not only provided a lot of good service for the stream team, but he also has new responsibilities that come with it. So mm -hmm. whenever we make changes or policy changes to the stream team, those stream team leaders get together and they get to help decide what the future of the stream team is going to look like and how that impacts the rest of the students who are part of the program. And Robert's been always a helping hand and always super helpful with all that so mm -hmm. thank you very much robert for doing I don't know, that I'm, just, I'm very passionate about this yeah it's something absolutely. that i do genuinely care about absolutely and you know another thing and i've shared it last time but i do have to share it again is um if another fun note for robert is it, he does he does all the different jobs but the main one that he does the most is commentary and commentary for robert he loves to commentate the youth games so for example all of our elementary streams they have a typically a lower viewage but what robert does is he's going to take basically an elementary basketball game or whatever type of game and make it feel like it's the nba finals for uh what's happening on the court and it just makes it really fun sometimes it's kind of funny but it's super engaging so he's coming at a very high level for something that seems to be a little bit more fun and just it's really really enjoyable to watch so if you're ever bored go onto the stream team youtube channel and take a look at some of the the elementary streams that we've done mm -hmm. in the past i really enjoy making the stakes unnecessarily high that's what makes it fun to watch though that's like the cool thing is that um it 
it adds value to the stream that you're watching mm. and it makes it a little bit more fun. Absolutely. Well, anywho, that's pretty much the end of our stream team spotlight. Robert, any final words that you wanted to mention before we sign off? Eh, not much. Just thanks for watching. Awesome. Continue supporting the stream team. Thanks. Please and thank you. The Hedinger Chamber of Commerce is a local business that supports other businesses in the Hedinger community. Their goal is to promote businesses and sponsor events in hope of attracting people to Hedinger while getting the community more involved. If you have questions about starting your business, an event, or want to find out more about the Chamber, contact us at 701-567-2531 or visit us at 120 South Main Street. Dakota Western Bank, your trusting partner since 1910, serving Henninger, North Dakota, for personal banking with checking, savings, and auto loans for businesses and agriculture. They offer tailored services and digital solutions. Discover online banking, applications, and mobile options. This is our website for locations, hours, and career opportunities. Dakota Western Bank, where banking meets community, proudly serving Henninger, North Dakota. Need a place to keep your cash safe and secure? Come on down to Dakota Plains Federal Credit Union. We can get you your cash fast with our drive through which is open from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., or you could come into the lobby, which is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We've been serving the community since 1992, and we are located at 221 South Main Street. You can contact us at 701-567-2153. Take the next minute to learn about some upcoming reminders and events for Hedinger Public School and the Hedinger community. West River has been serving our community for over 40 years. Our agents are here to help you get your home, auto, farm, ranch, business, health, and crop insurance. We are located in the lower level of Dakota Western Bank. Swing by at 603 Adams Avenue or call us at 701-567-9378. At Egg Pro Machine, we provide quality work and full-time service for egg and automotive equipment. We also have a large selection of parts and tools for your automotive and egg equipment. Call at 701-567-7500. Or you can also stop by east of Henniger along Highway 12. Graphic Addict specializes in embroidery, screen printing, direct-to-garment printing, along with expert video and audio digitalization. Enjoy complimentary popcorn and explore over 50 flavors of delightful jelly beans when you visit. Don't miss out on gearing up for the upcoming sports seasons with our exclusive Nighthawk collection. Drop by Graphic Addict or call us at 567-3161 to discover the perfect fit for your style and needs. Here at Kennedy's, we provide fresh goods and groceries for all your daily needs, reaching from our special selection of fruits and vegetables to our specially created delis and bakeries. Find us on 200 North Main Street or call us at 701-567-2404 to place an order. Big deal with that subscribe button. 
is not just for following our YouTube channel. It signifies much more. When you subscribe, you become a part of the HPS Stream Team, proudly supporting our vibrant program led by our students. Your subscription is a powerful statement, creating a positive ripple effect across our community and beyond. And don't forget, liking this video also sends a clear message to the students working this broadcast. It's a way to appreciate their hard work and motivates them to produce high quality broadcasts. So, go ahead, show your support, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Welcome to West River Vet Clinic. Here we aren't just your pet's healthcare provider, we're their second family. Our awesome vets offer everything from checkups to surgery. Plus, we've got great grooming. Here, we are big on preventative care to keep your furry friends happy and healthy. We also ensure a stress-free environment for both pets and their owners. For our services, you can visit westrivervet.com. You can find us at 203 US Highway 12 East or call us at 701-567-4333. The HPS Upload is a weekly broadcast of school news put on by the 7th through 12 video production class that provides coverage of recent events, sports, weather, and news stories. Now, let's take a look at the story from this week. So in today's school news story, we're going to do something a little bit different. We've uh, recently been doing stories about what's happening in the school, but it'd be kind of nice to do something a little different with why we do things here at the school, specifically things like testing, because you know, we've been doing a lot of things like NDSA testing, that's happening a lot right now, and also STARS testing. And that's what we brought in Maureen Swihovic. And Maureen, thanks for coming in and talking with us about this today. Really appreciate it. I just kind of want to share with students why it's important that they care about the test and you know, why does it matter to them? Because obviously for us, it's data, it's things that we give to the state, but why does that matter for them? Actually, STARS Renaissance testing has been around for several years and it is phenomenal for information for students. Students have an opportunity to set a baseline for scores in reading and math and then continue to see their progress and monitor their own progress until they graduate. It so, gives us information about how they might, or predictors, how they might do on other tests. So in a way, when you're talking baseline, you're saying that beginning level or you know the rating at which, which they're at or the number that which they're at for how good they are at reading or math or whatever and it gives them a starting point correct it sure does it starts at kindergarten and it okay. carries on through through their senior year mm -hmm. gives them an opportunity to measure their growth mm -hmm. to see if they are actually growing like their peers or growing accurately so they can be successful probably will even give a student an opportunity to decide what kind of job do I want I suppose. And with that too, with that data, are you taking um, those scores, seeing the trajectory, So, because everybody's worried about ACT scores and things like that, right? Is that kind of something that you can use as a tool to help you get to that good ACT score? Actually, there are uh, opportunities to measure the growth based on North Dakota state standards. And okay. using that information, we can use that information as a predictor for maybe doing well in a DSA or doing well on the ACT. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Maureen, for giving us a little bit of insight into uh, how STARS work and why students should get a little bit more invested. Now, if they wanted to learn a little bit more about their STAR scores and things like that, where do they go? Who do they talk to? They can speak with their homeroom teacher or they can come into my room and visit with me. I am always willing to help interpret any of the scores or they can talk to any teacher actually who could send them my way. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Grand River Honey is a family run business that's been making honey in both North and South Dakota and selling it to customers for over 30 years. We make several pounds of honey seasonally, all 100% raw and natural. This includes both clover and cream honey. If you want some honey, call 701-567-3439, go to dakotahoney.com, or take a ride after the railroad tracks on Country Club Road, Hedinger, North Dakota, 58639. Here at The Gutter, we provide a variety of food and entertainment. Make sure to enjoy bowling, pool, VR, table tennis, air hockey, and much more while we prepare your order. We have pizza, burgers, fries, dessert, drinks, and much more. 
You can find us by taking a left at the end of Main Street or call us at 701-567-6749. KB Jewelers is not only a jewelry store, but they also contain a lot of other great things such as trophies, books, holiday decor, and more. When you're looking for gifts for family, friends, or if you want to look at some cool things, come on down. They're located on 206 South Main Street, Hedinger, North Dakota. You can contact them on their number 701-567-2358. They're open from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. from Monday to Saturday each week. Come visit. Welcome to the Peacock Mercantile. We have been serving you since 2018. You can get baked goods like cookies, muffins, and pies. You can also get caffeinated beverages and non-caffeinated beverages. The Peacock is a nice place to socialize and meet new people. The Peacock also has refreshments like hot and cold coffee and smoothies. We are located at 213 South, Hedinger, North Dakota, 58639. You can reach us at 701-637-0102. Again, that was 701-637-0102. A better way of life is better days off and better nights in. Better hellos and better goodbyes. With locally approved, financed and serviced home loans, Gate City Bank makes buying a home simple. Welcome home. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Does your car have some body damage? Stop by Lakeside Auto Body where we can take care of all your auto body needs. Whether it is dent removal or hail damage, they can fix it. We also have a wide variety of paints to choose from for partial or full body paints. You can find us at Hedinger 103 Highway 8 South, North Dakota 58639 or call us at 701-567-4380. Discover the Adams County Library, where adventure meets relaxation. Beyond books and movies, we offer the incredible Recreation Library, which is absolutely free to the public. Explore serene waters with kayaks and paddle boards. Enjoy quality family time with disc golf, bikes, and kites. Experience thrilling activities like tennis, pickleball, and spike ball. Unlock a world of not only recreation, but excitement here at the Adams County Library. Attention, coaches, players, and fans. Here is a message from Nighthawk Nation. We as Nighthawks expect you to follow these simple expectations. Make sure to practice good sportsmanship. Please be respectful to all. Positive cheering goes a long way. And remember, we are just kids. We all make mistakes. To our coaches, remember to always encourage your players. We all make mistakes, so for the players to stay focused on the game, as coaches, you should always talk positively to your players. And remember, to relax what the players play and the refs ref. To all players, leave a positive imprint on and off the field, court, mat, and track. Work hard, play a role, and most importantly, have fun. It's just a game. Fans, we need to see you at our sporting events because without you, there is no excitement. To make sure you stay at our games, please refrain from using bad language, no yelling at refs, coaches, and players. Make your yelling positive because you can't cheer if you're not here. So remember to be positive. Let the refs and the coaches coach. And most importantly, the players play. Go! As a West River doctor, we provide care for patients of all ages, from newborns and toddlers to tweens and teens. Whether your children need routine checkups or specialized care, our experience and compassion are here to support their growth. Because even though they may be small, their health is of utmost importance. I'm a West River physician dedicated to the health of your family and our rural communities. Hawk Talk is the official podcast of Henninger Public School, where we keep you in the loop with the latest school news, offer inside of school board meetings, and dive deep into the educational experience our school provides for the students, parents, and tight-knit community. 
Take a minute to enjoy a clip from our most recent episode. All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hawk Talk. Today I have with me Sheriff Jordan Fisher. Jordan's been here for the last two years, been a heavy involvement with um, obviously law enforcement, but especially our school and our community, um, having a heavy hand on taking care of drugs in our local uh, local area. And I just want to thank Jordan for coming in and talking to us today about the services that you provide, not only in our community, but also how that affects our kids here at the school. So thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, no, thank you for having me, Joel. I think this is a great platform uh, for us to be able to kind of have a different dynamic. You know, we try to get into the paper as much as we can and do some mm-hmm. articles there and go on KNDC. But this is just another form of media that I think is just fantastic for this community to have. So thank you for having me on. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. So uh, the first question that I just kind of want to get out of the gate is obviously just kind of the history, you know, where you came from and and how we got to here to this current moment. But before we get here, though, you just got back from kind of some unplanned time off. Yeah. So what happened? What did did uh, some medical stuff or are you doing all right? Yeah. So uh, it was December 19th. So just before Christmas, I ended up having to go into the hospital, have my appendix removed. And oh, fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's you know, so fun. Yeah. yeah being, uh, being a little stubborn, I was like, man, I think I just got a little sick. You know, I have, you know, three <laughs> kids. And I was like, man, maybe I just have like a little bit of a stomach bug. And yeah. uh, no, it ended up being, uh, being appendicitis. So went oh, in fun. and had to get that removed and um, doing really good now. The awesome. hospital staff, the nurses, and uh, give a shout out to Dr. Andreas up there, the surgeon. She, she, she did an awesome job. So I'm feeling really good now. I'm back mm-hmm. out on on patrol and on duty and sitting at home for six weeks kind of started yeah it nuts. was kind of a recovery process <laughs> too you yeah. couldn't just jump back into it because there's i'm sure weight restrictions and the whole yeah. slew of things that you can and also cannot do yeah so yeah it was it was tough man that that six weeks just being you can only watch so much netflix right <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah you can only keep your mind so busy you want to go it. and do things yeah. so well yeah. glad to have you back glad to see you yeah. back in uniform and stuff so so great to have you here so let's go into the history so how did we get to sheriff at Hedinger. Where did that all start? Where are you from? How did you go, you know, into this field, all of that? Sure. So originally I'm from uh, Bowman and uh, mm-hmm. lived there all the way up until I was a junior in high school. Uh, moved down to Rapid City and lived with my dad the last two years of high school Okay. down there. And uh, while I was in Rapid City, the school systems down there have what's called an SRO or a school resource officer. Okay. Um, they're an actual licensed peace officer. They okay. work for the, you know, Rapid City Police Department, um, but they end up coming to the school and they're there throughout the day, Monday through Friday during normal school hours. Mm -hmm. And their job really is to, you know, make sure that kids are safe first and foremost. Um, But they also kind of act like a counselor in a way. And so with, with me uh, going to school down there, I've always been interested in law enforcement. That was also, that was always a career path that was always interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, When I was in sixth grade, I still taught to my sixth grade teacher from Bowman. And uh, we had to write this little project about where we saw ourselves when we were grownups, right? And Mm -hmm. on there, I put down that I was going to play football for NDSU (laughs) and that I was going to go and I was going to be an undercover DEA agent. Well, I didn't play football for NDSU and I didn't go into the (laughs) DEA, but you know. But the trajectory is similar. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So sixth grade, I'd say, is kind of when I started having um you know an interest in law enforcement yep. and i think a lot of that has to come down to will smith and movie bad boys you know because i was like man i gotta drive like a ferrari and like you know i gotta wear like a you know like miami vice stuff right yeah <laughs> yeah every sixth grade boy's dream man is to drive a ferrari around and go oh my fast gosh. And, you know. yeah be the coolest guy in the block <laughs> That's of course it. Yeah. and so um you know, did that and then went down to Rapid, got to really um, become pretty close to my SRO. He was a really cool okay. guy. Um, well, I'd go into his office during study hall period, mm-hmm. and we would just talk about law enforcement. Wow. And okay. yeah, from there, he suggested that one of his really good friends was a deputy sheriff uh, for the Pennington County Sheriff's Office. He's like, hey, if your dad will sign off on a permission slip for you, you can start going on ride alongs on weekends. They have what's called an explorer program down there. Okay. And so um, if you're in high school, you can actually start, you know, going on ride alongs with officers. You can hang out at the department and really see what law enforcement has to offer as wow. far as a career. And as soon as I did that, the first ride along that, that I went on, mm-hmm. um, he ended up chasing a guy down and arrested him. And I was like, 
that's for me, man. That you was know? it. It that was that it. moment, yeah. and you were like, "I'm in." Yeah, I mean, and the guy it. was uh, the guy had a bunch of bunch of meth on him, and wow. he took off on a traffic stop, and he got out of the traffic stop. He took off on foot. I saw the deputy chase him down and arrest him, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, pulled a whole bunch of meth off of him. And he's like, "This is why we do what we do to keep this community safe." And from there, I was like, "This is for me." You so, know? so you mean you really you. Now, if you enjoyed that conversation and would like to hear the rest of it, you can go and search for Hawk Talk HPS on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and of course, our YouTube channel. Now on to the rest of our broadcast. The HPS Stream Team is a school-to-work program in which students in grades 7 through 12 gain real-world experience while learning about the basics of live broadcasting and providing a service to our community. Now, let us take a moment to meet one of our members who help us make this possible. Hey everybody, thank you very much for tuning in to the Streamer Spotlight, a portion where we highlight our streamers that are behind the cameras, behind the mics, behind the laptops, making these broadcasts a reality. Today we have Robert Larson in with us today. Robert, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Robert has been um, actually has actually done one of these before, but it's been quite a while. So we thought we would kind of refresh it up and kind of give a new version of it. But Robert, thank you very much for coming in. Um, for those who haven't seen one of these before, why don't you introduce yourself? You know how how old are how old are you? Your hobbies, your interests, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Uh, I'm Robert Larson. I am 17 years old. I am a junior currently. Uh, and some of my hobbies are like, for example, I really enjoy just gaming. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, watch quite a bit of like shows and movies and especially anime. Um, and I really enjoy video editing, which most people don't. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I find it really therapeutic for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, like I'm a really big like music guy and I have a whole list of hobbies, just things that I enjoy. Awesome. Fantastic. So a lot in that media realm mm. that you're really, really interested in. And you've been on the stream like, team for two years yeah, now. Two you're years. Coming up on the third year this mm -hmm. fall. So, I mean, you've been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, what do you like about the stream team? What's some of your, your favorite things? Probably my biggest thing is just like, it definitely feels like a, a, a community. Yes, very, very much so. Where you kind of have a group of your peers that are kind of either like-minded mm -hmm. or similar interests. Right? Yeah, definitely. Gotcha. Because like, you know, we have a we have a stream team chat on teams and we have a serious one, but also more of a funnies one. Mm -hmm. And there is a whole culture there. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Kind of allows the students to kind of um, build that bond, kind of that trust mm -hmm. amongst each other. Be themselves. Absolutely. So um, not only with that, too. Um, other things with the stream team that Robert's been doing, because one of the things we like to do with the uh, streamer spotlight is kind of not only introduce you to who they are, but also kind of show what they've done for the program as well. And Robert's one of our stream team leaders. Mm -hmm. He has a diamond category in all three, um, or he has a diamond badge for all three categories, which is microphone, uh, which is your commentator, commentating. Producer, um, producer, and, and cameraman. And cameraman. He has diamond level, which is our highest level of competency that you can reach. And by doing that, it made him a stream team leader. So Robert has not only provided a lot of good service for the stream team, but he also has new responsibilities that come with it. So mm -hmm. whenever we make changes or policy changes to the stream team, those stream team leaders get together and they get to help decide what the future of the stream team is going to look like and how that impacts the rest of the students who are part of the program. And Robert's been been always a helping hand and always super helpful with all that so mm -hmm. thank you very much robert for doing I don't know, that i'm very passionate about this yeah it's something absolutely. that i do genuinely care about absolutely and you know another thing and i've shared it last time but i do have to share it again is um if another fun note for robert is it, he does he does all the different jobs but the main one that he does the most is commentary and commentary for robert he loves to commentate the youth games so for example all of our elementary streams they have a typically a lower We're coming to our banquet to celebrate our athletes tonight um before i begin with with our ba boys basketball uh let's give the booster club a round of applause for putting on a great meal <laughs> Thank you, Kennedys, for the, the, the wonderful meal. Um, excellent, excellent. So thanks, Kyle and, and crew, for that. <laughs> to start, I want to congratulate the girls' basketball team and their coaches on a remarkable season. 
Uh, you, you went on just an absolute great run to end the, the, the year and brought a lot of excitement to, to Nighthawk Nation. Um, you know, use this off season to build upon this season that you just finished on. Use this off season to get better, uh, get used to playing with one another even a little bit more and, and carry that momentum into next season. So uh, our congratulations from the boys basketball team to the girls basketball team. Nighthawk Wrestling, congratulations on your season. You know, the, the Nighthawk Wrestling program, the legacy, the traditions, all those things, you know, you guys are carrying that on, and I want to congratulate you on that. Um, girls, bas or girls Wrestling program, you guys are in a unique situation. You know, you had a wonderful year, but you guys get to build that tradition of having that girls program up and running, and I, I congrat congratulate you on that first year of really getting the girls program off and running with your own state tournament and those things. So congratulations to the wrestling teams on a great year. Now I'd like the, the high school boys basketball players and coaches, uh, stats and managers, come, come up and stand up over here next to me here. Guys, we had a great season, okay? Enjoyed this first season to be your coach. Um, it was awesome, you know. Uh, we didn't go as far in the, pre in the, in the postseason as I'd hoped, okay, as, as we hoped, you know. Uh, we, we talked about from the start of the year, no regrets. It's so important to prepare, 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 and we did that, you know. We did that. We had no regrets with how our season went. Um, Myself as a coach, I need to probably practice a little bit more what we preach because there isn't too many days that go by. I, w I don't wish I could go back in that overtime against Garrison and, and uh, get us a couple buckets. You know, I really would have uh, would have re really liked another chance at Bowman County. But uh, but no, no regrets. We did all the preparing that needed to be done. And as a coach, I guess when I say. Um, I think about those things. I guess that's as a coach, that's how I prepare. That's how we prepare. So when we get to the next season, we get to the next opportunity in overtime, we're prepared to succeed. So, you know, I love this team from the start. Um, I, I tried to preach to them early in the year that we wanted to be the, the meanest, nastiest, most physical team in the region by the end of the year. And I think we accomplished that. I don't think a lot of teams like playing against us. We were physical. Uh, we played the game the right way, but we played extremely, extremely hard. So, um, and that came from practice. That came from practice. It didn't matter if we had eighth graders all the way up to our seniors. We, we, uh, we really tried to focus on being that physical, physical team, and, and that's our, our philosophy. We want to be able to defend we want to be able to rebound. We want to be able to take care of the basketball. And by the end of the year, we did a really nice job of that. So um, I won't rehash the season too much. Um, but I think what really made this team take it to the next level for us is they've always worked hard. They've always worked really hard. But they started to understand the why. Why we do things. Why we rotate defensively this way why we cut and move without the ball this way, why we get an angle to get that post up or that screen. Once they started to understand the why, the work ethic even got better, and they just continued to get better with their skill set and as a team. So, um, yeah, we don't, we don't have any excuses. We don't have any regrets. And, uh, you know, we had a great year. We had a great year. So with that... Um, I would like to pass out some awards that we have, and I'll start out with our, our JV awards here. Um, our sixth man award for the JV um, goes to Robert Morris.
our most improved JV player, uh, you know, hadn't played a lot of basketball the last uh, few years, but really came on and, and, and became a leader for us at the JV level. And that most improved goes to Oscar Perkins. Our Mr. Hustle Award, uh, there were days in practice where I thought this player was going to clean the whole floor with his tongue hanging out. He had to uh, handle the basketball against our pressure um, and did a fine job in, in, in games as well. And our Mr. Hustle JV goes to Chase and Schumacher. Our Nighthawk Award, JV player, Nighthawk Award kind of goes to the person that embodies what our program's about. And, uh, you know, this, this player, you know, really improved throughout the season uh, and really loved the game of basketball, even though we couldn't get him to shoot the ball at all. Um, but our Nighthawk Award on the JV goes to Landy Eaton. And the MVP on our JV uh, scored a lot of points for us, rebounded the ball really well, I think has a huge bright future in the Nighthawk program. Our MVP in the JV is Aiden Fisher. <laughs> Moving on to our varsity awards, I'll start with our, our letter winners and I'll, I'll pass out the pins and the letters uh, at the end of the banquet so we, we don't have any mix-ups with that. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll mention all of our letter winners here. Um, first off, our, our managers um, receiving the letter this year, we have Brecken Jorgensen and Cooper Guthrie, and our statistician, Isabel Polcheski, will receive letters for being our varsity stats and managers. Our other varsity ladder winners, we have, uh, I'll read through them pretty quickly here. We have 14 of them. We have Jason Schumacher, Malachi Dills, Gavin Parno, Aiden Fisher, Caden Anderson, Jacob Galbraith, Forrest Forthune, Freddie Forthune, uh, Maddox Pierce, Landon Eaton, Joey Perkins, Oscar Perkins, Tyler Wilson, and Blake Larson. So congratulations on earning your varsity letters. And moving on to some other varsity awards, our Mr. Hustle, um, you know, was a real pain. If we needed to chase somebody on the court, um, this guy had that matchup and just worked hard on both ends of the floor, was a sweaty mess every, each and every practice and game. And uh, our Mr. Hustle goes to Malachi Dills. Our six player awards, we have one for our post position, one for our perimeter position. Um, this comes down to the player who uh, received, you know, the highest stats coming off the bench for us. Um, our six man award winner for the perimeter player goes to Gavin Parneau. And our six player award in the post, um, you know, really brought energy off the bench, you know, brought a nastiness to the floor, and that, uh, that post player is Freddie Forthune. <laughs> Our most improved player, um, you know, this first player on the, on the perimeter, uh, most improved, it's hard to say most improved when he was, he's been a, a, a starter uh, for two years, but when I say most improved for this player, he, he kind of became that big shot maker for us. The player that uh, went from only shooting when he had to, to actually seeking out his shot. And our, our most improved perimeter player goes to Caden Anderson. And our most, most improved post, um, also brought a lot of energy, was able to put the ball in the basket for us and do some really nice things. Uh, most improved post goes to Forrest Forthune. Our Nighthawk Award at the Varsity. Um, 
This, the Nighthawk Award, I, I'm giving it to two of our athletes, uh, two seniors that embodied our program. Um, both, both of these players missed half of their senior season due to, due to injury. Um, and we, we uh, really love the way that they continue to come to practice, support our, our, their teammates. And um, when they were ready to go, uh, they brought it and, and uh, just, just leaders in our program. So uh, the first night Hawk Award goes to Joey Perkins. And our other night Hawk Award goes to Maddox Pierce. Our MVP this year, um, you know, leading scorer, leading rebounder, did a lot of things for us, and we, we ran our offense and based our defense off a lot of what he was able to do for us. Our team MVP, uh, Mr. Blake Larson. A couple other awards that I'll, I'll finish with our awards on uh, were, were given out during our tournaments, our, um, making the all-district team for us. We had Maddox Pierce and Blake Larson. And making the all-region three, we had Blake Larson. Uh, one final shout out to our seniors. Seniors, please step forward. In our program, uh, we put a lot of responsibility on our seniors. And that doesn't, that doesn't matter if they're a senior starter, they're a senior role player. Um, we ask them to lead, we ask them to you know, develop the, the energy and develop um, just what we embody as Nighthawks and what we want. And, and th this group of seniors right here are gonna be really hard to replace. You know, we have physical post players, we have guards, you know, uh, we just did a lot, of, a lot of things together as a group as seniors, and I think they really helped the underclassmen understand in our program how hard you have to play, how tough you have to play to be successful. So seniors, let's give them one last round of applause for everything you've done. Underclassmen, big shoes to fill, and that starts this off season. All right, we need to continue to get in the weight room. We have to continue to get in camps, get some shots up. Um, you know, as a coach, I, don't, I have a philosophy where I don't necessarily want to micromanage things. And I think as players, if you want to continue to get better, yes, we'll do camps, yes, we'll do open gyms, but both of our communities have great parks. You know, if you want to learn how to play, go play when no coaches are watching and play with one another and compete and compete and compete. And, um, you know, truly that's, that's how you get better. You know, love the game, respect the game, and I'll guarantee you the game will respect you back. So um, to our boys basketball program, uh, thanks for all your hard work and effort this season. Thank you to all of you for your support throughout the year tonight. And, and moving forward. Uh, Night, Knock, Nighthawk Nation is, uh, doesn't matter what support we have. We have a lot of support uh, from everybody and uh, we love it. It's a good day to be a Nighthawk. Thanks everyone. Before we move on, um, we got a couple got gifts for the coach and coaches. But before that, I'd like to say that it was awesome playing with all of you guys and for all you fans that show up and cheer us on. It was amazing. It will definitely be missed, but you guys were awesome to play with, and it was fun years playing with all y'all. But for you younger guys, get ready to work for more to come, and you know, show how it's really done. Thank you. 
All right, I guess it's our turn at this today. Um, first of all, I want to go with Coach Pierce and thank everybody that helped put this on. Booster Club, a great meal. Look at the turnout, what, a, what an awesome event. Um, boys basketball. You know, I talked with Coach Pierce a lot during the year, and all year he just kept saying, by the end of the year, by the end of the year, right? I don't think anybody wanted to play you by the end of the year, did they? Right? You guys just got better every week. Every week you could see you guys getting better and better and better and better. By the end of the year, you guys were a team that nobody wanted to be out there with. So congratulations on a great season. You know, with our wrestling program, I'm not going to go tell you I know a whole lot about wrestling technique, right? Right? But I've watched this wrestling program enough over the years that there's a standard to be a part of that program. You know, it's a program that's very proud, rich in tradition, and you just see it. You see it from the youth all the way up, and, and you just see so many, so many big events with good crowds and Nighthawk wrestling is just always going to be there, all right? So congratulations there. I'll just get all the girls basketball team to come up here, Coach Fordall, Coach Dix. You know, with, with this group right here, right, they keep you on your toes. Um, from eighth grade on up, I can't think of one time where I had to ask somebody to hustle this year. That's, that's not always the case, all right? They hustle every play. They play for each other. And as the season goes on, you start seeing how it pays off. C team, you know, we had so many sicknesses and illnesses. We played, I think we played three or four quarters this year where we could only play five girls. We had no subs for them, all right? And they're running down the court, you know, get me out, coach. Well, we were out of quarters, right? But they battled, battled, and battled got better every day, got better every day, all the way down to the last game where I just saw some calmness in them. And then you move up to the JV, same deal, right? We have injuries, we have sickness. So we're trying to get better, right? We want to win, but we want to win while we get better. And you could see it, you could see the confidence in them by the end of the year, the confidence in the taking that shot, making that kick ahead pass, things we preach all the time in practice. I couldn't be, couldn't be more proud of that. You know, they, they challenged our varsity every day in practice. They weren't afraid to get after it. That's how you build a program, all right? So we, as coaches, we were pretty lucky, pretty lucky to have this group. Um, did you want to say something, Coach Dix? Yeah, I just want to say quickly with this uh, C squad and JV, we brought the eighth graders up, and it really helped those freshmen, sophomores, juniors get a lot better. Um, overall, I think it was a great season for JV, C squad, uh, Coach Ford all coming along halfway through the season and um, just learning a lot of basketball. Um, I do want to say over the years, not only with Coach Kellner, but coaching with Coach Pierce, um, their coaching techniques, they don't scream at the kids. I, I've seen Coach Pierce one time get a little elevated. Coach Kellner got a little elevated. I did see Coach Kellner get out of his box a little bit in Bismarck. We were at Olive Garden, and he screamed at this unknown lady and called her a granny. You might want to explain that one. 
but uh, it just it's just awesome coaching with these two. Um, these girls are so much fun, just so you guys know that they are very comfortable on the bus around us. We did have a little pandemic going over uh, districts. We had dog jaw. We're over that now. Soph's feeling better about that one, so Soph can explain that one too. But overall, three seniors. I know I coached all three of those probably eight or nine years, I think. Uh, it's been fun. I'm going to miss all three of you. I already gave my senior speech in the locker room at Kildare. I'm not going to do that again. So with that, we got some great awards. Do you want to read them? You want me to read? I'll read them off. You can. All right, we got some JV awards here. You know, this year is probably the hardest at trying to get these awards just because there was so much, you know, give it, to give out a defensive award. Right? There was just so many candidates this year. But with our JV, we had a couple of returning veterans that I really think set the standard for our JV. And then it carried on into varsity as well. So we gave two defensive MVP awards out to Kinley Stoddheim and Erica Havelka. And then for our most improved at the JV level. You know, another, another award where you're trying to pick, right? You're trying to pick. But I think we're going to give this to two players that I really think came on by the end of the year and, and started believing in their abilities. And then you could just see them grow every day. Every day they get better, more confident to try new things. Right, so those two awards, most improved JV, Callie Tim and Kyan Stoddheim. Okay, now to our offensive MVP award, JV level. Uh, this player, this player was key to getting our offense going. Whether it was kick ahead passes whether it was pushing tempo, making shots, right, attacking the hoop. All right, this goes to Katie Buckmeyer. <laughs> Our JV Nighthawk Award. I lied. Our team MVP or JV, all right. Katie will come up here. We'll talk about it a little bit. Katie continue to get better all year, right? Led us in steals. Led us in scoring, all right? So J uh, Katie gets our JV MVP award. <laughs> then our Nighthawk JV award. You know, this goes to the player that tries to be the best she can be every day, right? She is also supportive of her teammates. And one thing that comes to mind when I think of this player was when we handed out a couple more varsity uniforms towards the end of the year, this player was happier than anybody out there and couldn't wait to go celebrate with them on, on getting their award. That goes to uh, Samantha Salazar. That ends our JV awards. Thank you, girls, for a great year. Um, before we get to the varsity, I got to go back to this. Coach Dix brought me up and tried to tell a story quick. So, so nobody's thinking I'm just a jerk. We got somebody that takes, well, we got more than somebody, but Layla takes a while to get off the bus. So we're at Olive Garden, and I'm holding the door, waiting for everybody to get off the bus. About five minutes later, Layla finally starts stumbling out of the bus, and, and I said, uh, come on, Grandma, hurry it up. Just as I said that, a lady, probably about my age, was walking out of Olive Garden <laughs> and gave me the look, the worst look you could ever imagine. <laughs> so there I was falling all over myself trying to make sure she knew I wasn't talking to her, but I don't know if she believed it or not. 
Um, this varsity crew, we, uh, we talk a lot about looking for positives in everything, right? One, one thing, they probably get sick of me saying it, uh, saying my old man told me once 10, 12 years ago, and it stuck with me the whole time. And it was about, I was complaining about somebody. And I was just complaining, complaining, complaining. And finally he looked at me and told me to shut up, first of all. And then he said, you know, if all you do is look for negatives in somebody, you're missing all the good and positives that are happening. So that's something we talked about a lot. As young individuals, as young athletes, don't look at the missed shot always, right? Were you doing everything to get to that shot? Don't look at the turnover, right? Look at how to fix the turnover. There's so many positives with this group that we really wanted to focus on that. And you look at our finish throughout the year after a slower start than we would have liked. We won eight of our last nine regular season games. In those nine games, we had the third or fourth lowest scoring defense in the state. We talked about finding that defense, right? I consider myself a defensive coach. And sometimes coach just has to get out of the way. And I had to get out of the way for this group, right? Sometimes you overcoach, right? Offensively, just think of, remember the swing offense, right? Coach Keller had it made up. We were going to run this swing offense, and it was going to be good. And we wasted three and a half weeks on that swing offense until I finally had to realize I'm the problem here, right? Right? We got to, what does this group do best, right? Okay, they get after it. So with that said, we lost to five teams this year. Four of them were in the top 12 or top 16 of the state, their state tournaments. Two of them were ranked in the top three. So it just happened those games were all early too, right? So we built off of that. We built off of that. We went on a run. We had, to, we had all sorts of adversity, right? And we just kept plugging along, kept plugging along. This, this group just kept me kept me excited. They never gave up once, right? Every, after every game, win or lose, I could see in their eyes they were ready to get better after that. They never hung their head and thought this is over with. I want to thank them for that because that's a unique thing as well, all right? Okay, we're going to give out some quick certificates for the varsity here. Um, first one, first time I've ever given out this award, but I think it's Worthy, right? Charges taken in a season. All right? And I think we're missing a couple, but we got eight charges taken this season. Got to be a record. I don't know. I've never kept track of that one. Kelly Shower, charges taken in a season. <laughs> Offensive rebounding. We talked about trying to get some more defensive rebounds, right? But she really got those offensive rebounds. Vanessa Os. This is a new one I really started tracking this year. It's a turnover percentage. Everybody looks at total turnovers. And that's not really indicative of, of who's taking care of the ball the best, right? Because some players handle the ball more. And this, this factors all that in. And this number almost cut, cut in half by game seven to the end of the season. She was well over 30% turnover percentage, and she finished at 15% turnover percentage. That goes to Monica Morris. <laughs> All right, now we got assist leader, we got steals leader, we got defensive rebounding leader, total rebounding leader, 
three-point leader, scoring leader, right, Alta Layla Jansen. Just a few more trophies here and then we'll be done. We'll do defensive MVP first. This one was a tough one for me. Like I said, over our last nine or 10 games of the season, we had the third best defense in the state. And it's because everybody contributed to it. You look at our deflections, everything we did, just got better and better as the year went along. But this person was tasked with chasing the best player sometimes, anchoring our zone defense, taking charges, right? Kelly Shower. <laughs> um, for our most improved now, and this one's a little different than we've, I've done in the past. I looked at, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, we had all sorts of candidates for that. But I really think when we started going on our run, this player's points per game went up three or four points. Her deflections went up, her steals went up. And she gave us that extra attacker that kind of took us to that next level where I felt like we could play with anybody. Our most improved for this year is Monica Morris. <laughs> Our offensive MVP. You know, tasked with handling the ball, breaking the pressure, getting others involved, scoring. You know, uh, team leader for us, right? Our offensive MVP is Layla. Our team MVP this year, Layla, come on up, right? Not only, not only was she an offensive MVP, She's also a two-year captain, right? Always there for her teammates, always trying to push them to get better. So Layla was our, off or our team MVP. And our Nighthawk Award, this player gives everything she has, every play. And she does it to help her teammates out. And sometimes as coaches, we learn things throughout the season Last game of the year, I was taping ankles. And I use this player's name a lot with our girls. Take the shot. This player's not going to get, she gets mad every once in a while, but she won't get too mad. And I said that all throughout the year. Well, Vanessa was the only one not in on the joke. So as I was taping ankles at last game of the year, she goes, Coach, do I really get angry at those players that much? The only one that wasn't in on the joke was Vanessa. Vanessa was the ultimate team player, nicest human being we've had around. Our Nighthawk Award goes to Vanessa. I got one more physical award here, and just this is just an accomplishment. Um, that not a lot of people get. January, January 27th up in Washburn, this player got her thousandth point. Pretty memorable way of uh, getting fouled on a three-point shot. All right. So we just wanted to get her something to try to remember that moment. I'm not very good at this sort of thing, but this one turned out pretty nice. So we got basketball here with the date. A picture of a jump shot her dad sent me that I just, when I think of her shooting, that's what, that's what I think of. A pretty neat little thing. So Layla, here's a basketball for your thousandth point.
right? We also have, they could just step forward or wave or do something, right? We had two all-district players in Layla and Monica this season. We had an all-region player in Layla this season. Right, and we also have, you know, being able to coach some pretty great players. I found out she was a finalist for all state, and I was as nervous as I've ever been. Never, when I was the assistant coach, I didn't worry about that sort of thing that much, but it's like, man, I hope, hope I did everything to help her. But, you know, to be a first team all state player is a pretty big accomplishment, and I know she would thank everybody up here for helping her get to that. Her deal's not here yet, right? Next week her, her uh, award will be here. But first team All-State, that's quite the accomplishment, kiddo. I'll be really quick here with these seniors. The three nicest human beings put on this earth, I swear, right? I've never seen them get mad at anybody. Maybe me every once in a while, but not their teammates anyway, right? Appreciative. When you look up the word teamwork, right, their picture's right there, all right? Thank you for five years, right? Five years? Five years I survived it. Right? I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank Coach Dix, Coach Fordall. I want to thank the parents. Um, we had some real, lots of good help. Jensen's, Kennedy's, um, bought us a lot of meals this year. Thank you very much. That's very appreciative. <laughs> My family's not here. But I, I, want them, I want to thank them, my sister, my parents. They bought us a lot of meals this year, did a lot of things for us. They, I'm just an old, old weirdo, right, that loves coaching these kids, and my family sees that, and they always want to help support too. So they'll never hear this, but I just want to thank my family too. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Let's have a good summer, girls. Kalia, stay up here. I'll just have all the wrestlers come up right away. Won't we'll waste time. Scope, come on. While they're making their way up here, just want to say thanks, everybody, for coming out, supporting all these athletes and, and the meal and everything. It's, it's been awesome. I love coming to banquets. Um, you know, celebrate the athletes, celebrate your kids. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, right away, we'll just start with a uh, little something about this team. Um, we have about half of our team here right now. Um, they're, they're a special group, for sure. Uh, a lot of character on this team. Uh, a lot of antics in the wrestling room before practice. A lot of dodgeball games. Um, a lot of using foam rollers as bats to play softball. Uh, things like that. Uh, they like to have a lot of fun. But let me tell you what, when it gets down to work time, they put their nose to the grindstone and they absolutely rip it out. Um, every night they come into the room, it's, they get better every day. Every single day, practices get better. They get better as athletes. They get better as people. And uh, it's just a lot of fun, you know, hanging out with these guys, um, seeing some, some athletes that are old now, that were young when I was still wrestling. So it's been really fun to see them grow and excel in the sport. And uh, it's a very, very proud moment because I feel like, you know, I – the team that I was on, you know, really, I don't know how to explain it, built that tradition up, and they're following it to a T, and that tradition is, has kept along for Coach Burks and coaching for 35 years now, so a 35-year-old tradition that just keeps running. So with that, um, we don't have a lot of individual awards. we got a banquet next week, so we'll start with the uh, varsity lettering. Um, we got a bunch of people. Uh, first one, um, in eighth grader, right? Stone Stottheim. 
This guy, yeah. <laughs> Got him. Stone, uh, Stone has a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to look forward to. He's a great kid, a great wrestler, and I can't wait to see him excel as he comes up through the ranks. So the uh, next guy we got on here is Mr. Dan Skogan. <laughs> Dan, Dan is our firecracker. You never know what's, what's going to come out of his mouth. <laughs> he says a lot of funny things, really funny kid. But he's, he's, the, he's the definition of a Nighthawk wrestler. He comes in, he works hard, likes to have fun, and just a great guy to have in the wrestling room. Keeps the keeps the humor up. We love to see, we love to have Dan in there. Good, Dan. Good. Mr. Brody Sott. Brody is another young guy that comes in, works very, very hard, and is always, always continuing to grow. You know, you always ask athletes to ask questions, get better at the game, learn new things. All this stuff, and, and Brody does that to a T every day. It's, it's a question for somebody, whether it's Coach Berwick or me or Coach Anderson or Coach Vanderpool. Um, Brody and I had our, had our rounds in the wrestling room, so I've had firsthand experience of what it feels like to wrestle him, and I feel bad for anybody that steps out on the mat against him. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus Roseland. Cyrus uh, is a young guy that, that made huge strides this year um, as far as, you know, just believing in himself. Going out there, he got asked to uh, step out on the varsity mat and uh, handle some business, and he did against a lot of really, really talented wrestlers. And uh, he's slowly etching his way into the books right now and making a name for himself. So good job, Cy. Austin Ormiston. Austin's, we have a lot of young guys, we have a lot of 7th and 8th graders. Um, same thing, he comes in, works hard every day. Uh, we have a lot of 106 pounders, more or less 106 pounders, um, that they, they beat each other up every day. I mean, it's, it's a grind for all four or five of them that we had, five or six. And uh, yeah, he's, he works hard, it's fun to watch. He's going to be a big name coming up too. Tyler Shalesky. Um, arguably one of the hardest workers in our room. Uh, he, he comes in every day. He has his fun too, but he's, uh, he's our worker. He comes in, busts his butt, hustling through everything, whether it's wall sprawls or live wrestling, anything. He grinds every hour we're in that wrestling room. And um, a lot of growth again this year. And I can't wait to see, see what he does in the next coming years. Right. Trevor Daly. My boy. Uh, <laughs> Trevor and Brody were uh, practice partners this year. So I've wrestled with Trevor quite a bit too. And man, that kid, he's, uh, he reminds me of a lot of those funky wrestlers that you hate wrestling because they just find their way to wiggle out of anything. Um, kid works hard. He can run forever. It's crazy to watch him run. Uh, but wrestles hard. Great wrestler. He came around, you know, Miles City about halfway through the season. He stepped up. He started wrestling unbelievable lights out and continued to get better. And uh, he's going to be a good one coming up. Good job, Jeff. Riley Hasbrook. <laughs> Riley is a guy, I, don't, I have too many words to explain this guy. Um, put it in a nutshell, all of them are hard workers, but works hard, has a lot of fun, likes to goof off and mess around, but he keeps it light in the room, he keeps everybody high in spirits, and uh, yeah. It's fun to watch him wrestle, man. He is so fun. Quick, fast little guy. So, good job. <laughs> oh, hey, let's see. Yeah, let's see if I'm for last. Yeah. Our first girl, uh, Michaela.
I had the unique opportunity this year of being the quote unquote girls head coach. Um, so I spent a lot of time traveling around with them and if anybody tells you that girls wrestling is the same as guys, don't listen to them. It's a whole different sport. Um, Akalia was dual sporting, playing basketball, coming into the room a couple times a week. Um, she came a couple tournaments towards the end of the year, had an absolute lights out region tournament, um, got seated 10th, ended up taking uh, no contest third, we'll count it as a third, but she really came out of her shell, grew as a wrestler, it was crazy to watch, state tournament was the same thing, so hopefully she keeps going with it, she's going to have a bright future. Ellie, Ellie Roslin. She's the, uh, the leader of the pack, um, usually causes all the antics, usually is the start of, of a lot of things. Like, you know, uh, oh, the, the rule book in the car. That was Ellie. Ellie started that. Um, but, yeah, Ellie had a great, great year. Uh, we battled through some, some injuries and some, some boo-boos here and there, but she just kept plugging away. She kept working her hardest and just fighting every match she went out there. So, very, really proud of her. Can't wait to see her move up into the Marines and, and have a good time there. So, good job. Tanner B. Tanner Blackwell. I have uh, nothing but, but good things to say about this guy. Um, after the unfortunate um, injuries we've had, I... Uh, Got moved to being his practice partner every day. So he's sick of me. I'm kind of sick of him. Can't wait to get rid of him. <laughs> no. He, he came in every day with a smile on his face, ready to go. I think he never stops working, ever. I'm, I'm fat and out of shape, and he whooped me over a lot of days just because this kid's motor is just so high. So really proud of this kid. Uh, he's, he's worked really hard to get to where he was at. Fell short this year at state, but it was not at all for the lack of effort. He went out there every day, every match. You know, as soon as he stepped that foot on that line, it was game on, and he was going for as long as he could. So, really proud of him. Thanks, Tanner. <laughs> and then the final awards we have for tonight is the Academic All-State. Um, I'll start with the boys. We have uh, Trevor Daly. Tanner Bo. Just a minute. To, to be academic all state, you have to have a 3.45 GPA. And uh, I think this is your second all state? Second all state for Trevor. Good job, Trevor. Our next academic all state is Tanner Blackwell. Oops. Stone Stottheim. Kyler Shalesky. And he's not here tonight, but Jaron Frank was also on that, on that academic All-State team. And for the girls, we have Kaylee Olson. We're pretty proud, and, and I know that uh, boys and girls basketball, you guys were academic all state teams. We had both ours, boys and girls both. So we're pretty dang proud of that. Good job, <laughs> academically, absolutely. By everybody, by everybody. And we got two of the four seniors here, so if you guys want to step forward. Um, it's sad to see, see both of these athletes go, as well as the other two that, that couldn't make it tonight. But um, these seniors have led a team you know, we fell short of duels, but again, it wasn't for the lack of effort. And these four, these two physically, but these four seniors were, were the spearhead and all of that. Um, I learned a lot from them as far as being a coach as, as much as I taught them as an athlete. So I'm really proud of all these, all these uh, seniors. I know Coach Berwick is too. And we just want to thank you guys for everything and thank you for your hard work. We got some 
uh, trophies here. Their uh, Nighthawk Award for their seniors. We got Ellie and Tanner Blackwell here today. So, your seniors. And with that, I'm good. All done. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right, that brings us to the end of our banquet, but there's a couple things I want to talk about. First of all, Coach Berwick um, did mention uh, the Team Scholar Award, the North Dakota High School Activities Associ Association's Team Scholar Award. All four of our winter sports got it this year. How it works is you know, we send in the GPAs of everybody on their roster, and if they have a cumulative 3.2 GPA or higher, you get that Team Scholar Award. So we're pretty proud of our student athletes for maintaining their grades, plus the rigorous schedule our coaches put out for them. The second thing I want to do is, you know, we're, you know, celebrating these kids. How about a round of applause for these coaches? <laughs> what we as fans witness on game night or dual night is only a fraction of the time that these coaches put into their sport. What we get to see is the finished product. They're in there every day grinding and they're up every night watching film and worrying about matchups and things like that. Without the hard work of all of these coaches, their assistants, and the fans too, this is what success feels like. Great job, everyone. We want to, again, congratulations to all of you athletes. We do have one more announcement. I have one more and then Coach Berwick has one more. Um, in any given season, there are 45 senior athletes of the year named. Uh, and I might be stepping on Coach Berwick's toes. Luckily, we have one of those this year. Uh, and I'll let Coach Berwick talk about her. But the other thing I wanted to talk about, we have 45 senior athletes of the year. Um, there is only one Distinguished Student Award given out every year. One kid out of the 112, 113 schools we have and we are proud to announce that Layla Jensen is a finalist. She's one of the six finalists to be, to be honored with the Distinguished Student Award. She'll be going to Jamestown on May 1st for the luncheon. And we're just going to wish you good luck, Layla. Layla, congratulations on that. That's huge. Um, we did have... First off, Coach Warbus, thanks for everything, buddy. You did a heck of a job all year long. Um, just kind of training him. <laughs> so you have a Mr. Basketball, a Miss Basketball. Wrestling has a Mr. Wrestler and a Miss Wrestler. It's given to the top senior athlete in those sports. I wish she was here, but she's not. We were fortunate enough, this girl wrestled for me since she was knee high, as did Ellie. Yeah, she's hip high now, as did Ellie. Those girls started when they were in sixth grade and were with me that whole entire time. In my opinion, we should have had two of them, I guess, but I guess that's the way it works. But Jennifer Verdon was named Miss North Dakota Wrestler of the Year. <laughs> she will have her picture out in the hallway with the others out there. Um, the plaque will go up there. Um, Mr. Tui wanted me to say thank you to 
Jennifer, <laughs> for being able to draw this. This was drawn by Sheriff Tui. So this will go, put it that way, I don't think anybody's, everybody's seen it. That'll go out in the hallway. Miss Wrestler of the Year, Jennifer Verdon. And that's a huge honor, huge honor. So, all right, thanks. All right, with that being said, we want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank the Booster Club for putting this on. And we'll see you again in June for the spring. But what Robert does is he's going to take basically basically an elementary basketball game or whatever type of game and make it feel like it's the NBA finals for uh, what's happening on the court. And it just makes it really fun. Sometimes it's kind of funny, but it's super engaging. So he's coming at a very high level for something that seems to be a little bit more fun. And just, it's really, really enjoyable to watch. So if you're ever bored, go into the stream team YouTube channel and take a look at some of the, the elementary streams that we've done mm -hmm. in the past. So. I really enjoy making the stakes unnecessarily high. That's what makes